i thank the almighty god for giving me one more opportunity to stand with the word it's a great privilege even though it takes time to prepare the message it's a privilege to stand with the word of god and i would also like to extend my thanks to pastor vincent due to limitation of time i had chosen one of the messages that i had spoken about previously it's about noah's ark let's turn our bible to hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 by faith noah being warned of god of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith bible says by faith noah being warned of god of things not seen as it he moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness which is by faith if we read if we go through this hebrews chapter 11 it speaks about great men of faith and one among them is noah noah he prepared an ark to save his household as instructed by god the bible says he is warned of god it means it indicates god spoke to him and what did god warn the things that are going to happen hearing that the bible says he moved with fear he prepared an ark not out of his own plan or idea but god is the de- designer of the ark the g- ark was built designed by god and built according to god's purpose what does the ark represent or what is the importance of the ark the bible mentions we can read in the bible about three ark exodus chapter 1 verse 22 the bible says if you read exodus chapter 1 we see as the egypt as the children of god the israelites they started multiplying pharaoh he became nervous he thought that they would become a threat to the land of egypt and he went one step ahead telling that they may join the armies enemies of the egyptians and will fight against the egyptians so he issued a decree exodus chapter 1 was 22 and pharaoh charged all his people saying every son that is born he shall cast into the river and every daughter he shall save alive so moses was born during this difficult time when all the male children was killed if you read the book of exodus chapter 2 the bible says an ark was made to rescue moses this ark was called the ark of the bulrushes this ark was made to save only moses to save one child and this ark was prepared only for moses the next ark that we read in the bible is the ark of noah genesis chapter 6 the bible says god decided to destroy mankind from the face of the earth and to save one family not a person one family god sent an ark made of the ark of gopher gopher wood and who entered the ark noah his three sons then three daughter in laws and then his wife so oddly eight souls were saved then the bible mentions about another ark 
if you read exodus chapter 25 verse 10 and they shall make an ark of shittim wood two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and half the breadth thereof and a cubit and half the height thereof the bible mentions that when the children of israel they came out of bondage from egypt in the journey towards the promised land they were as they were walking in the wilderness god spoke to moses to make an ark the purpose of the ark is god wants to dwell among them and to save them so the first ark that we saw it was made only for to save one person the second ark that we saw is to save a family the third ark that we saw it is it is to save a multitude or a nation so the basic purpose of ark it represents saving or salvation to escape from some great punishment that is going to happen but it comes to the when it comes to the new testament we see the ark of salvation that god sent his only begotten son our lord jesus christ into this world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have but shall have but shall have everlasting life that is what so ark basically represents saving or salvation matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and he shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins the bible says she shall bring forth a son thou shall call his name jesus and he shall save his people so god sent his only begotten son lord jesus christ not to save one person not to save a family not to save a fam a nation but for the whole for the whole mankind this ark of salvation came in the form of man to save the whole world and what did jesus say every ark has got a door right yes. at least answer this yes. otherwise how can we enter the ark if there is no a house has a door right yes. so an ark is also having a door. and and this ark of salvation jesus christ what did he say in john chapter 10 verse 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture all this ark were designed by god it was man made but this ark of salvation he is not born of any human flesh or any human idea he is god manifest in flesh hallelujah hallelujah if you love jesus you have to this hallelujah should come automatically from your heart it should not be pressurized it should not be excused as soon as you hear this the spirit in you should shout hallelujah hallelujah every ark as, as the ark has got a door what did jesus say he is the door to salvation hallelujah. hallelujah without jesus there is no salvation those who don't know jesus will be left behind jesus is the ark of salvation the door of salvation hallelujah the three ark that we saw earlier the door of that ark is already closed the purpose for which that ark is made the purpose is already fulfilled but this door jesus christ even today god is telling now is your time repent now not for tomorrow this door is kept open because we are living in the period of grace but when we leave what is the meaning of grace for stamping temporary akama there is a for amnesty there is a grace period is it forever no there is a limited time in the same way grace should not be taken in a very joking way today is our time if we hear the word let us not say tomorrow i will bap- get baptized tomorrow i will come to the church tomorrow i'll start reading tomorrow is not ours hallelujah we don't know when this breath will stop 
it is in the hands of the almighty god we don't know our life is in the hands of the almighty god that is why god said humble yourself into the mighty hands of the almighty god help our job is to humble himself and he is the almighty god the god of abraham isaac and jacob now is our time so we are living in the period of grace don't delay things when god convicts us take it immediately today is the day of salvation today is the day of repentance this is the time the bible says now but this period of grace this door will be closed and then we will be left behind so tonight as noah made the ark and his whole household was saved the same way let us ensure that not only we our household our children our parents are all inside the ark Amen. our all inside if we gain the whole world and lose our soul everything is in foolish and in vain whatever position we have whatever authority we have whatever beauty we have whatever riches we have once this breath stops everything will go to somebody somebody takes it it will be left behind so that is the value of a human being without god without his word the bible says he is like an animal that perish tonight let us see two things what will happen if we remain outside the ark and also to enter into the ark what we should do going to the days of noah let us see what happened in the days of noah how the people led their life during the days of noah if you read genesis chapter 6 7 and 8 this we will understand what happened in the days of noah how noah entered the ark and what happened to the people who were outside the ark as i was comparing noah's ark with the salvation in christ jesus let's see even though i said that let's see what the bible says first peter chapter 3 verse 18 to 22 for christ also hath once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of god waited in the days of noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water the like figure were unto even baptism doth also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience towards god by the resurrection of jesus christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of the god angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him the bible speaks here about connecting noah's ark with the salvation in christ jesus the ark in when in which eight souls were brought safely through the water noah's ark rested on after flood it rested on the mount mount ararat eight souls were brought did they enter the ark and did they perish no eight souls were brought safely through the water this ark is the picture of our salvation in christ jesus god's judgment came and those who are outside the ark perished but eight souls were saved from the judgment because they listened to god's word and got into the ark that provided their salvation likewise this is our salvation in christ jesus when we hear the word we should not harden our heart when god convicts something let us not postpone it for tomorrow because next moment tomorrow is not ours hallelujah hallelujah how did noah became worthy to enter the ark the bible says god saw the evil 
from heaven he saw the evil committed by the people psalms 14 verse 2 and psalms 53 verse 2 we read in the bible lord look down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there is any that did understand and seek god god looked down from heaven and he did not see anyone righteous during the days of noah when god looked down from heaven what did he see genesis chapter 6 verse 5 and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually the next verse 6 and it repented the lord that he had made man on earth and it grieved him at his heart the lord god who made man in his own image he is telling that he repented man he would have laid his hands on the head and said i repent that is what the action we do right he would have this is my imagination it's not in the bible he would have laid his hand on because god created god loved man so much that he created him in his own image that same god looking at the wickedness of the people he is telling that i repent for creating man Malachi chapter 1 was 2 and 3 I have loved you said the lord yet is say wherein has the louders was not esu isau jacob's brother said the lord yet i loved jacob and i hated i hated isau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness isau and jacob they are children of children of jacob children of isaac they are children of isaac and they are brothers looking at one son god is telling i love jacob and looking at esau god is telling i hate him why both of them committed sin one was committing sin in a straight forward another was crooked what was the sin committed by esau genesis chapter 25 was 30 onwards if we read he sold his birthright to jacob his brother jacob for a pottage of stew just for a piece of bread he despised his birthright can we purchase our birthright it is given by god wherever you go and change the date of birth or anything you will not become elder <laughs> only that date of birth will change only for the paper only on paper it is valid that i am born before him but in fact the truth is the birthright is always the younger is always younger the elder is always elder that is given by god some people they say the brothers fight i don't have such a brother how foolish it is some parents they say, i don't have such a son that is out of anger but in reality can it happen it's all created by god this relationship is created by god the birthright has to do with both position and inheritance so by birthright the first son inherited the leadership of the family the eldest son he has the leadership of the family and the judicial authority of the father birthright is given by god when it is rejected you are making a you are mocking at the creator it means rejecting the giver of the birthright it is an abomination to the lord isa din value the ordinance of god what is the sin committed by jacob jacob exploited the hungry esau by into selling his birthright genesis chapter 27 the bible says when isaac was very old his eyes were dim he couldn't recognize who is esau and he can only feel and who is the elder son who is the younger son 
So when Jacob goes to Isaac, he was going in a fancy dress. He, he took the, he made him appear that he was Esau. And he went near his father. His father asked him one question. Who are you? And what did he say? I am your elder son, Esau. What a lie, what a deception. He cheated his father and received the blessings that was kept for the elder son. So Esau committed sin and Jacob also committed sin. God gave enough time for both of them to be justified, to repent, to correct their ways. But Esau, the Bible, as we read the scripture now, Malachi chapter uh, 9 verse, chapter, chapter uh, 1 verse 2 and 3, as we read now, God gave time to both of them. Esau, he didn't make use of the opportunity given by God. He was totally an indifferent person with indifferent attitude. And that's why the Bible says, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau was, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. The Bible says he was sexually immoral or an ungodly person. For a single meal, he sold his inheritance as the oldest son. Verse 17, verse 17 says, Hebrews, For you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Verse 17 says, Later on, Esau went and repented, but he was too late and he was rejected by God. If we don't make use of the opportunity now, today, maybe later, we will never get the opportunity. So Esau did not make use of the opportunity given to him. How did Jacob make use of the opportunity? J Jacob ch cheated Esau and Esau made a plan to kill Jacob. So his mother overheard this and told him to go to his uncle Laban's house. There he was serving Laban for 20 years. He actually went for 7 years. He cheated his own brother. But when he went to Laban's house, Laban was a, had a doctorate in, in cheating. cheating. He made him work for, so what you sow? He cheated here, his own brother, and he ran away there, told seven years, and made him work for 20 years. And in between, lot of cheating because we don't have time to. But one thing, he held on to God. He had the fear of God. It made use of the opportunity. He, when he was returning, after serving Laban for 20 years, it is the promise of God given to him that he should return to his own country. He came to the river, shore of river Jabbok, and there he is talking to God. Genesis chapter 32, verse 10. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan. And now I became two bands. He is confessing before God. When I went to my uncle's house, I had only one staff in my hand. Now I am returning. How? Not with one staff. As a big army, as a big family, great and lots of blessings and properties in two bands, as two armies. And he is adding, he is becoming more humble in the sight of God. He is telling, I am not worthy to receive all these blessings. It means, it is all given by God. It is all given by you. It is not because of my strength or, or because of my merit. 
and then what happened he did not cross he was very clever he did not cross river jabok he made because there is a death threat from his brother so he made his family his camel his cattle everything to cross and he remained there the purpose of him remaining there he want to wrestle with god in prayer he wrestled with god and throughout night he prayed and when the day break was approaching god told jacob let me go and what did he say unless you bless me i will not he had an encounter with god that changed his life each one of us should have an encounter with god only then that will change our life god's jacob said i will not leave you unless you bless me because if he is going to cross that certainly death is waiting him and now god is asking him a question what is your name the god who created him doesn't know he know he is jacob then why did he ask because he knows who is inside the old jacob jacob the god who numbers the very hair of our head doesn't he know my name doesn't he know the name of each one of us sitting here god knew jacob knew god is asking this question because not that he doesn't know his name he has a purpose sams 139 verse 16 the bible says thine eyes did see my substance and yet being unperfect and in thy book all my members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them the bible says your eyes has seen my formless body when i was in my mother's womb this god the almighty god the all powerful god doesn't he know our name doesn't he know my name doesn't he know the name of jacob then why did he ask him jacob started rewinding when he heard this question he started rewinding his life 5 years back 10 years back 15 years back 20 years back he remembered the sin he committed his father asked him who are you and what did he answer i am esau did he answer the same way to god no he said i am jacob and god said he had an encounter with god from today onwards you will not be known as jacob you will be known as israel his life all together changed hallelujah he is a mighty god that we serve the almighty god who knows us in and out all we need is to be submissive to him if we are ready to submit and surrender our life to him he will give us a new heart he will give us a new purpose he will give us newness in our life he will give us a new heart and a new spirit and that is why the bible says when you believe in christ jesus you will become a new person all things are now he is no more jacob no more qualities of jacob he held on to god and now he is israel hallelujah when jacob confessed his sins and repented he was accepted by god when we sit in god's presence let us put ourselves in that situation god is asking the same question to us what is our name what is your name what are your qualities are you still the same we we are all together different when we come to the church are we the same when we in our workplace are we the same when in our relationship with our neighbors are we the same when it comes to money matters are, is it the same when we when we are outside when we move in the public are we the same when it comes to property sharing of property what is our godliness in that god is asking what is your name god is asking each one of us what is your name hallelujah he knows in and out it is it is our we have to humble ourselves and surrender our life to god hallelujah god knows exactly what is inside of us when we we must become a person justified by god we must be washed by the blood of jesus christ the next quality of noah is his obedience noah was obedient to god genesis chapter 6 verse 22 and it came to pass when thus did noah according to all that god commanded him so did he 
he didn't add anything to his own idea god said do like this do like this and god the bible says as god commanded so did he he did the bible says he did what was not seen in the title scripture what does it say want of god of things not seen as it he has not seen flood he has not seen rain he has not seen water but god said made an, god said you make an ark with his design till then noah has in seen rain or flood and he had no idea about an ark in all these circumstances the bible says without asking any question he obeyed god the last thing genesis chapter 6 verse 13 and god said unto noah the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold i will destroy them with the earth god spoke to noah that is going to destroy ma- mankind and what did noah believe that there is going to be judgment he preached for many years from the time he started constructing the ark say that he preached for 100 years during this years as the ark was being constructed he was preaching the word of repentance that there is judgment coming but there is none repented noah preached for many years but nobody repented let us be reminded that the day of the lord is coming romans chapter 14 verse 10 the bible says for we all have to stand before the judgment seat of christ all of us shall be shall have to stand before the throne of judgment the in verse 12 it says romans chapter 14 verse 12 it says every one of us shall give account of himself to god second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 the bible says we all must appear before the judgment seat of christ matthew chapter 12 verse 36 the bible says every idle word that we speak not our actions every idle sometimes we crack jokes at others insult and we say it's only a joke no everything is accountable in the sight of god the bible says every idle word every whether secretly or openly or whatever we do every word that comes out of our mouth we are accountable to god noah preached for many years none repented the ark was completed goa noah god said told noah get inside the ark noah and his children and his entire family of eight souls entered the ark and verse genesis chapter 7 verse 16 the bible says god shut the door genesis chapter 7 verse 16 and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god had commanded him and the lord shut him in when the when the eight souls appointed by god when they entered the ark god shut the door when the door was closed another door opened that is the door of judgment and the windows of heaven were opened and it started raining it rained 40 days and 40 nights and those who were outside the ark perished noah's ark had three floors if we construct a three story how many doors it will have even though it had three floors there was only one door similarly our door of salvation is only one door that is in christ jesus the bible says in acts chapter 4 verse 12 there is neither there is salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven that is given among men whereby we must be saved as an ark of noah had one door our door of salvation is christ jesus and he is the only door hallelujah and he is going to come soon hallelujah and bible says in genesis chapter 8 verse 1 god remembered he didn't forget noah it rained 40 days god did not turn his face bible says god remembered noah 40 days 40 nights god sent a wind and the ark rested upon the mount ararat so what we have to remember is just as the call to come into the ark was only for a limited time so god's call to come into his son is only for a limited time just as the ark was planned by god so salvation is christ, salvation in christ is planned by god this door will not be open forever 
the time is coming that this door will be closed just as the coming of the flood was at an unexpected time all those who made fun of him never expected this judgment as the coming of the flood was at an unexpected time so is the second coming of christ at an unexpected time let's be prepared may god bless you with this word loving heavenly father thank you lord for this day you gave us thank you lord for the blessed worship you have given us lord lord we bless this worship team in the name of jesus anoint them lord and use them mightily lord for the extension of your kingdom we especially bless the small children who have sung lord hallelujah they they shall see the greater glory of god in the coming days lord use them lord the entire worship team lord shall be sealed by the blood of jesus christ they shall prosper lord in everything they do lord they shall prosper and they shall be your child lord sealed and anointed lord hallelujah and be blessed for the extension of your kingdom we bless the elf church lord bless today's gathering lord we pray for all the ushers and families the media team lord hallelujah though all those who are toil lord for lord hallelujah even though no i has seen your i has seen them lord bless them and the family and the generation the lord is not indebted to anyone hallelujah lord be bless them lord and the family and the generation we pray for all those who are going through various sickness lord they shall be healed in the name of jesus may those who are going through various trials and tribulations lord hallelujah once again we claim your promise lord that i can do all things through christ jesus who strengtheneth me the lord will perfect that which concerneth me hallelujah lord on our way back home lord be with us you brought us here safe you take us back safe lord everyone's job residence everything shall be under god's protection thank you lord once again we bless this nation in jesus name we bless this nsc campus in jesus name thank you for the freedom of worship that you have given us lord we give you all the glory all glory honor power and majesty belongs to you you are our shepherd lord the lord you will make us to lie down in green pastures because you are our shepherd surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life we pray but we didn't bring anything to this world we are not going to take anything lord hallelujah we pray our soul is precious none of the souls in a family shall perish all shall come to the saving grace of god we give you all the glory we bless your holy name all glory honor power and majesty belongs to you alone let your name alone be glorified and exalted in jesus mighty name we pray and ask may the love of the heavenly father the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and the fellowship and the communion of the holy spirit be with us now and forever more amen. amen victory in the name of jesus victory in the blood of jesus victory in the name of jesus yesu masi ki yesu ki lahum ki yesu masi ki yesu ka navan yesu ka ratan yesu ka navan may god bless you the lord will bless you the lord